Once you've gotten comfortable with the basic reactions in a chapter, you're ready to move on to an actual multi-step synthesis problem, which is where most of the action is. To prepare a synthesis problem, just go to the Synthesis Explorer section and fill in the setup box from top to bottom. To have the system keep track of your progress, you'll have to log in by entering your student ID number here. And make sure it's your ID number, as that is what your instructor uses to record your grades. From there, select which class you belong to, and for now, let's work on a random synthesis problem. To do that, we'll just leave this selection as Generate Random Synthesis, and then select which chapters of material we're interested in working on. For example, let's try a problem based on the alcohols and epoxides chapter, and which requires no more than two steps to solve. Click on Generate Problem, and then the system will prepare a synthesis problem based on the selections we just made. Here we have the primary synthesis problem interface for the system. What we are presented with is a target product that we, as students, are supposed to try and make somehow. And what we have available to us is a list of possible starting material reactants, as well as a list of reagents, the kinds of things that, presumably, we've been learning about in class or from the textbook. Our job, then, is to piece together the correct combination and sequence of reactants and reagents to reproduce this target product. One of the first things I'd go ahead and do for any problem is to click on this Hint button, which narrows down the list of possible starting materials. The hint is free, so you might as well take it. And once you've taken it, look for this black line. You should only need the reactants listed above the line to solve the problem. You don't have to use any of these reactants, it just means you should not need anything else. Now let's actually try to solve this problem. Looking at the product, I'm thinking a Williamson ether synthesis by an SN2 substitution. However, looking at our available reactants, none of them has a decent leaving group to facilitate such a substitution. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to convert one of these alcohols into a good leaving group. To do that, just click on a reactant you want to work with to copy it to the pathway workspace area below. Then click on a reagent you want to work with, such as this thionyl chloride and pyridine, to copy it to the workspace. Now that we have both a reactant and a reagent selected, click on the big Apply Reaction to Generate Products button, and the system will actually predict the major product of that reaction, which is this alkyl halide. To continue the synthesis, click on the product of the reaction to copy it as a reactant for a new reaction step. To finish the synthesis, we just need to do an SN2 substitution with this alkyl halide, which we can do by adding in a good nucleophile like this ethoxide ion. Notice how you can have more than one molecule on the reactant side of the equation to represent mixing chemicals together. In this case, there is no particular reagent to apply since it's really a reactant-driven reaction. So instead, just select one of the reagents which says something like mix reactants or catalyst. Apply reaction to generate product again, and this time, since the predicted product matches the target product, the system congratulates us for successfully solving the problem. When you do this, make sure that you see this line. Your progress was successfully recorded in the system, so you know that the system is actually giving you credit for your work. Once you have completed a problem and want to work on another one, just click on New Problem, and the system will make up another target product based on the same chapters of material. Once it loads, you can still get a hint for the new problem, and if you ever get completely stuck on a problem, you can always access the expected solution. It's warning us that you will no longer be able to receive credit for solving the problem once you have seen the solution, but don't let that discourage you. The real point of this system is to help you learn the material, so go ahead and look at the solution for a couple problems, then hopefully after that you'll know how to solve the next set of problems on your own. When you want to work on something else, click on the Return to Setup link to get back to the initial setup page, and from here you can prepare another synthesis problem based on different chapters of material. In fact, you can even select combinations of multiple chapters and problems of greater length to generate even more difficult problems that will really challenge your knowledge and better represent the difficulty of real exam problems.